I think we all recognize the importance of wireless communication in the times of an emergency. You have to call 911, and these days most people are doing that with their wireless device. With us to talk about E911 and wireless is Brian Joseph, who is the Assistant Vice President of Regulatory Affairs here at CTIA. And Brian, thanks for being with us. Thanks, John. Happy to be here. Let's talk about E911 then, if you will, and uh, just from the basics, if you don't mind. I mean, how when I call a 911 call center, do they know where I am? We have the technology to locate the vast majority of calls with no problems. Um, and the way they do that is with network-based, but increasingly handset-based technologies. What does that mean? It means there's GPS receivers uh, that can see satellites, and those satellites help position and determine your location. Uh, that information, or sometimes it's assisted by the network, so where the locations of cell sites are, uh, is provided to the public safety answering points, or 911 call centers. And they receive that information. They pull that information as they process a 911 call and speak to the caller. We know the industry is investing a lot of money these days, billions of dollars uh, into network infrastructure. How is that carrying over or affecting 911 and, and location accuracy? As we migrate you know, to uh, fourth generation technologies, we're seeing the, the number of calls and the accuracy of those calls increase. So even before fourth generation technologies, there are enhancements that carriers are making on a, as a matter of course that are improving the accuracy. 4G LTE has you know, unique capabilities that you know, the carriers are, are pursuing. Uh, it allows enhanced access to uh, network-based information. They're also looking at, in addition to GPS, other satellite constellations that can help you know, enhance and improve the accuracy of the location information that they provide to those 911 call centers. I hear a lot these days about the Z coordinate. So there's the X and the Y, but the Z, the, you know, the height, whether you're in the 15th floor of a building or the 30th floor for that matter. Um, what's the challenge of determining the Z coordinate when it comes to 911? We saw the public safety representatives conclude that while the technology was helpful, it's, it requires additional development uh, in order for them to get uh, actionable information for first responders, more work needs to be done. And the wireless industry is committed to working with you know, vendors, with public safety. Uh, we have worked with them in the past. We will continue to do so to you know, determine you know, that technology that can help us with a Z coordinate, but is also achievable. You just talked about the, the future of 911, and um, that plays into next generation 911 services. I mean, what's that all about? Where is this going, do you think? We want to meet consumers where they're moving in terms of their use of mobile devices. So what that means for next generation 911 is an environment where uh, texting, sending of pictures, uh, potentially even sending video you know, can be done from wireless uh, devices, can be sent to the 911 call center and provide really critical information you know, to those responding to incidents. Uh, so that's, that's just one you know, small vision of what next-gen 911 looks like. Uh, certainly it, it requires resources on the 911 call center side, requires you know, that we have sufficient spectrum for the wireless industry, and then we certainly continue to work uh, to enhance the capabilities in the devices and the networks themselves. Well, there's certainly a lot of possibilities, and I think great potential down the road. And uh, Brian, I want to thank you for taking time and sharing your thoughts on that and on E911 in general.